Okay, good morning, everyone. Please go uh, to Moodle and download uh, the materials that are good for week seven. So when you uh, try to import the workflow or when you just click on the workflow file, you might get uh, such a page asking you for installing extensions. Please just uh, say yes. Otherwise, you see such a thing. There's some uh, red warning. It just means you don't have an extension. So today we are going to do some text processing experiments. So we need to have te uh, text mining or text processing module from Nine to be installed. I give you about five minutes to download those workflows and to open it and just install the modules. But pretty much you don't have to do that much of thing. Just uh, press yes to almost everything, and that should be fine. So for the homes who just joined, uh, just download everything from week seven and click the workflows and just say yes, yes, yes. That should be. Yes. Thank you. 
So on the lower right side, it just shows how many percent is. Is there anyone who finished the installation? So at least one of you, one of you did. So yeah, I wait, wait a little bit more because it's still some you Okay, so I said sorry. It's just loading the installation, but let's talk about the, the big feature. So look at this center. This is a, uh, it, it seems somebody asking about somebody's health. So uh, do you think, looking at this center, do you think it has a positive sentiment or negative sentiment? Why is contradiction? Maybe the, maybe the other one was to make fun of the other ones, right? Sarcasm, yeah, yeah sar sarcasm. Yeah, might be a little bit of sarcasm. But yeah, so it's one of the difficulty of sentiment analysis. So it's very hard for a computer to understand sarcasm. I don't say impossible, but it's very hard. For, for a human, you might think it, there's a somehow they might have some sarcasm because it's just, I think, do you feel sick in this beautiful cold day? So there's a lot of contradictions. So, but let's say you're a robot and you want to think it, it could have a positive or negative sentiment. So what would be your judgment? Maybe you look at the sentiment of each word, right? Maybe for you, sick sounds negative. Beautiful might be positive. Cold could be some negative, maybe not too, not too it's much. An it's an irony. Pardon me? It's, a, it's an irony. 
Yeah, yeah but, but could be a little name, not too much negative. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, it could be not neutral, yeah. definitely. So you, by now you see some challenges in text mining. First of all, sarcasm is really hard to depict, like here. Uh, second, some of the words might be definitely negative, some of them could be definitely positive. Uh, some of them could be social, maybe close to neutral. And sometimes they might have different meanings. So I'm trying to find some, you know, sometimes I don't want to say those sentences because they're really rude. So, but sometimes, especially for boys, when they like each other, they say some rude words, but it just means they like each other or they feel they're bro, you know? So maybe uh, if you look at the words, it seems very really rude and maybe very negative, but the actual sentiment is not negative, it's positive. So that's another difficulty, which almost very, very hard to just uh, uh, be able to recognize by a computer, but in the computer level, we focus on the words. So for today, we have two dictionaries, one for positive words and one for negative words. Then uh, we identify positive or negative words or neutral words. And at the end, sum up the positive and negativity. So here, maybe it could be less than zero. So two minus one plus. So the sentiment here, less than zero, but maybe not too much. On top of that, just look, some of them, like in and this, you can just easily disregard with a lexicon based sentiment or right? So this question mark, maybe. Maybe do you, those kind of thing. So it's a big feature for today. So we have some sentences. Uh, we have some measures to get rid of some words that don't have, definitely don't have meanings. And, or maybe it could be just punctuations or stop words. Then we identify positive and negative words based on our dictionary and some of the sentence. So we decide could it be positive, could the whole of the sentence could be a positive sentiment or could have a negative sentiment. So, could you finish the installation of the modules? Still installing? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so let me give you a history. So this is one of the way people try to predict who would be next president. So if you look at their papers, they look at the tweets in some states and use a sentiment analysis. They think of seeing that how, this, how much of tweets are have, sorry, how much of tweets have positive or negative sentiments? Let's say in, in Massachusetts, if they see, they look at the hashtag Trump or hashtag Bernie or hashtag Biden, then maybe for hashtag Biden, if the sentiment is very positive, maybe they think, if I'm Democrat, I, I don't do a campaign in Massachusetts because it's very positive. So I don't need to do a campaign. But let's say similar to here, and let me just, let's say in Arizona. Let's say for hashtag uh, Biden in Arizona, if it's a little less than zero, maybe you think of it's better to do a campaign there. So you, you invest in the, on the, in those, those states. And using these sentiments, maybe they can have a good idea uh, about who could win the election. If, if for Biden, almost all the states, or uh, majority of states, has a very positive sentiment, they, maybe they feel a lot uh, uh, more comfortable about winning the election. So, 
So I think one of you could install the module. How many? Could you? Finish? Okay. Okay, let me start the workflow slowly. Then maybe hopefully in the middle you can catch up. So the first workflow I want to look at is lexicon-based sentiment analysis. So I just click on reading data. And let me just click filter reader. I saw the file reader as it is older version. But I think I told you how to replace with the new one. But if you click on it, I'm importing IMDB dash sample.csv. It's one of the sample uh, data set from nine website. But as you see, it has like an ID number with index, URL, a movie review on the text column. So on the text column, you see some sentences just about certain movies and so somebody already uh, read all of those sentences and file just uh, with uh, basically manually identify if they have positive or sen ne negative sentiments so the last column is identified manually we want to do lexicon based sentiment analysis then uh, compare our accuracy with the uh, manual uh, uh, manual sentiments, then we can decide uh, if our methodology is a good one or not, based on the accuracy. Okay, so I so we talk about empty cells or sometimes some values are not uh, accessible. So if it's independent variables, we do imputation. If it's for dependent variable, we just drop those observations. We, we cannot impute dependent value. Here, our dependent value is sentiment, which is manual sentiment uh, calculation. So if, and since it's a dependent variable that we want to calculate accuracy later, Anytime we see any empty cells in for under sentiment column, Okay, so let's right click on the uh, second module, row filter. I go to the last item, which is filter. So this is a human friendly table, which you have uh, column names and under column name, you see the values. So again, here, text is our independent variable. Sentiment, which is pause and next. Neg which means positive and negative. Uh, so this last column is our dependent variable. But for nine, I mean, nine cannot use it for calculations. It's just how they develop nine. So we need to convert HEMA-friendly for table format to something that is friendly for nine. So next module, it just basically do the conversion for us. So from the third module and next, next one, uh, it look, might look a little weird because it just, he, he, it's not human friendly. It's, it just convert to a format that uh, none can easily process. 
So if you click, it's just asking me about text document, which is on the te text column. And also the, se the second one, um, I need to identify dependent value, which is sentiment. So these two are necessary. You, you could also have a, a label for each cell. So in the first one, I just said, I uh, use the URL for the title of the cells that you are creating. Might look a little weird. After you run it, I right click on it. So look at the first one. We have everything URL, text, dependent variable. And now look at the last column. The last column has summary of sentiment column and text column, and also URL. So these three are merged into one, and I, I name it document. For each cell, you see it's a URL. Might look weird, but this is just a like a nine friendly format. So uh, still, uh, you don't need to worry about that. It's just how nine can see the other text column. And in the column filter, I want to get rid of the, the columns that are for human, because from now, I, I just did the last column, which is a nine friendly column, and my nine just processed the document column that I created. Having said that, as you see in the red section, I just put some columns there, it just means I don't, want, I don't need it. And in the green ones, it's the only column that I want to work with. So if you click on column filter and look at filter table, you just see document column. Because it's just what nine needs for processing. Okay, I give you a few minutes to play with this part. And if you have questions, you can ask, then I go to the next one. If you, hopefully if you could be able to install those, uh, the text processing module. Also, if something is new, you, I think last time to show you how to make annotation, so you can just put some notes if you think you may forget later. But I, I definitely will share the video with you guys, but we also can put some comments on your workflow. Okay, so let's look at the next uh, meta node, which is pre processing. So, actually, in the pre processing meta node, I'm just going to get rid of like stop words, punctuations, and maybe some. Uh, uh, I can like make some, all of them in lowercase or uppercase, like here, do is in the uppercase. So, click on pre processing. So look, first one, I open one by one later. I want to get rid of numbers because numbers may not have that much of sentiment. Punctuation eraser, stop words, 
and case converter. So in punctuation, I get rid of punctuation, English punctuation uh, characters, and also in the next one, I get rid of stop words. Last one, I convert all of them in the lower case. So click on it. So pre-processing, I'm just saying that take document and replace by itself. So I don't want to create a new column. Still, I want to work with the document. And here, I just want to get rid of numbers. Even if you open the stop words, it's just simply just say, uh, this is the column that I want to work with, this document, the only column. After processing, just uh, put in this exact same location, replace one, and same for stop words. And finally, I'm just saying that make everything to lowercase. So when I want to do matching, I, I, as you have seen this example, I need to have two dictionaries that identify positive or negative sentiments. In my dictionary, everything is in lowercase, so I want to just convert everything in lowercase. So I don't want to have some I don't want to have some mismatch. Question about preprocessing? I think it should be very straightforward, especially if you look at this sentence. So for the people who doesn't know what is punctuation and stop words, especially if your first language is not English, you can just easily Google it. Like English stop words, like A, A, E, S, R, and like punctuations, like braces, colon, semicolon. So these are uh, some, some sample of the stop words and punctuations. Okay, it seems if I come to here. So by now, probably I got rid of this one. Now, this one converted to two with the door. And I don't have any stop words. Okay, next step, I need to just attach a positive dictionary and negative dictionary. Look at the uh, bottom left of your workflow, it's an MPQA dictionary. So just, uh, I'm attaching two dictionaries here. Click on the first one. So, Table above accept. Do you think this is a positive dictionary or negative one? Yeah, positive. Yeah, it seems positive word. And click on second. Abject, like up her. Negative. Abandoned seems negative ones. Yeah. But as you see, still I'm loading uh, files from uh, nine website. In maybe for your own industry, you have different dictionaries. Maybe some words, is, there's some technical words in different industries. So although here you just get dictionaries from nine, but maybe for certain applications, you need to create your own dictionary, then load the this, this, this CSV file into nine. But here we just use the nine default dictionaries. So in two steps, I'm adding dictionaries one by one to my uh, workflow. First one dictionary tagger. So if you click on it, I'm just saying that use the uh, dictionary column is word here. You know, the column is word. And it has a positive sentiment. And as you see, it's still I'm working with the document column. If I right click and go to the results, it's still everything, although I attach a new dictionary, but everything is on just one column. It's just uh, much easier for learn to process it. 
in this, with the second dictionary tiger node. Similarly here, I just said, this is my negative dictionary. And still I'm just working with the document column. So by now, it's still one weird column that it seems has all of my information. Okay, I wait a couple of minutes in case you want to add some notes or questions, then I go to the next. Okay, so next step is just attaching positivity and negativity to the words that I have and then counting. So look at uh, EOW-TF meta node. It just stands for bag of the words, term frequency. It just means uh, I work with the words that I have and I uh, calculate this frequency. So TF stands for term frequency. So I have a bag of the words creator node. It just basically uh, split my uh, each document. Here again, document means one data cell. So document could be a sentence, a paragraph, or even a, a 10 pages story. But here we just have our document means each review. Having said that, let me just right click. Okay, so look what happened now. So uh, now I have an extra column of term. So for each document or movie review here, I might have several terms. So let me just expand it. And then look at the first one that I highlighted here. Maybe, oh, everything up to here. So I have to seek your cell value, which is the movie URL is same. But it just seems to repeat repeated several times. So it's what back of the words note do. So it just uh, finds it, the words of each movie review. And based on how many words uh, it, they have, they just repeat the uh, row. So here I'm not sure how many, zero to okay. It seems here movie I uh, that this movie URL or movie name had 35 words. So bag of words just split and repeat based on the unique number unique number of uh, words that they have. It still might look, look very weird for you, but it's just how none can find the term frequency or finding how many positive or negative words that it has. So NIME has a challenge of uh, some format that is that easier for processing and also easier for human. So sometimes, uh, they are more toward human friendly format, sometimes non friendly format. So, here, uh, even for myself, when I first saw my story, I didn't see what happened, so why it's repeated. But there is no math behind it, just how nine, uh, it's just how they program nine. But we, we reach our goal, so we could split our, or we could identify the boards. Uh, that are in my each document or movie.
So with the TF node, I can identify time frequency of each movie review. So uh, how many times if uh, a, a, word, like a word happens in my document or movie review. If I expand it, so look at the one that I highlighted. It seems follows happened twice in that movie, uh, a movie review. How could I identify in one movie review? Because I look when I look at itself, I just see the movie ID. Or here ID just means the movie link. I know the word of follows happened twice in uh, my movie review. Here, if I look at this sample, uh, some uh, sentence that I put to you, put here, all of the TF, which term frequency are one, but they just happen one time in this document or in this sentence. So just as a big picture of the WTF, uh, I was be, I was able be able to basically uh, divide my each movie review into its uh, uh, building blocks, which are the words, and also I know the frequency of each word in each movie review. Okay, let me just wait a couple of wait couple of minutes in case you want to add comments or basically uh, put some um, or have questions.
look at look at the board. So let's say I have two different sentences. One of them has 10 positive words and five negative words. The other one has 20 positive words and 15 negative words. So if you subtract them, both of them, it seems they have five positive words more than negative words. And we just disregard how much positive or how much negative. So if you just look at this, maybe you can say they are almost has same positivity values. Uh, like it's, you cannot say which one is more positive, but uh, just assume this one has um, 20 words. So the whole document has 20, the other one 100. So it seems if you look at the uh, basically sentiment value divided with total words, the first one is five from 20. The second one, five from 100. So it seems the first one might have much more sentiment direction, positive uh, direction, sentiment direction than the second one. The well, second one says, has so many uh, neutral words. And so if I want to justify which one might be more toward positivity, I would say first. So basically next part we are do such a thing. We want to find how many positive and negative words we have and also what would be uh, the, relate, uh, the relative uh, positivity and negativity. So look at the lower branch. It just have a group by node. When I click, I'm just grouping by based on document column. Aggregation is just, um, uh, I want to sum up number of uh, words, so summation. If you right click and look at the group table, you just see how many uh, words you have in each movie review. So basically, if you look at the boards, I'm calculating 20 and 100 with the, just with the group by note. So, in this branch, I calculate denominator. There is an upper branch there too. In the upper branch, I want to calculate the numerators for this formula. So, the first one still is. Um, uh, formatting node. So I just want to convert my tag, positive words with a positive tag and negative tag to something to a string column that is easier to process for nine. Okay, so if you click on it, and also I'm extracting. Uh, uh, their positive and uh, negative tag to, uh, to new columns, which just exactly write positive and negative. So I'm just saying that this is a sentiment tag and you get it from the term column. Result would be this. So for some words, uh, the sentiment is positive, for some is negative, and I some of words have just a question mark. It just means they are not from my dictionary or maybe they are neutral, but I don't have any information from them. So for this reason, you just see the question mark. So HTTP could be neutral or nothing. Airfight could be maybe negative, but it's not from the dictionary. So Boxing, uh, some other film, 
smell. I think sweat could be negative, maybe. Yeah. So for so, so basically, this module just take out the positivity and negativity tag, which are imported and assigned to my document column, and just created two new columns of positive. Sorry, a one new column of positivity and negativity as a text document. So the next one, just to pivoting. So with pivoting, let me just right click again. I can pivot over document column because, um, and the ID would be the link that I put there. And when I do pivoting, my function would be summation of positivity and negativity. If you forgot what is pivoting, please just watch a like five minute video of what does pivoting means in Excel. So it should be very straightforward. So I'm using document column. I'm pivoting based on sentiment. And the aggregation is just summation of positivity and negativity. If you don't know what does pivoting mean, but if, but if you look at the result, I think now it makes more sense for you. So I have two columns. Negative sum of uh, ter uh, term frequencies, absolute value, and positive words. So basically, I have two columns. Shows me how many positive and negative words I have in each movie review. Having said that, for the first movie review, do you think this is a positive uh, movie review or negative movie review? Who said positive? You said why? Is it a more positive word than positive? Yeah, it's very simple. Yeah. What about um, maybe for second could be tie? What about third and fourth? Positive. Looking at this, re even just this page of re review, it seems there's too much of positive words in comparison to negative. It seems most of my reviews are positive. It could be right, it couldn't. So sometimes the easier way, you just sum up positive and negative and uh, just uh, find the difference. So if it's more than zero, you say positive, and otherwise you say they are negative. Sometimes like here, it seems there's too many positive reviews, and, or maybe your dictionary is, uh, is kind of biased. So you don't have enough negative words to just uh, attach to your words. And uh, you might see in the previous notes, it was so many question marks. Maybe your diction is not that much good for uh, picking negative words. Anyway, so one way is just finding the sub subtractions. The other one, maybe instead of just simply saying, find the differences of positive, which is positive number minus negative. This is the easy way. Maybe you can say, let's say, if the difference is more than 10, I would say a positive sentiment. If it's not more than 10, I would say negative sentiment. It could be one way. Maybe another way you you might say instead of uh, subtraction more than ten, maybe subtraction more than the mean of sensitivity. Mean of all positive. Positive so you find the differences of positive and negative in all the documents, and you find the mean. If it's more than that, positive, otherwise negative. So there are different ways. The, more, the most straightforward, you say if it's more than zero or less than zero, but you just go back and forth to find the best uh, formula. 
there's a lot of subjectivity and maybe sometimes in some experiences, but this is another drawbacks of lexicon based analysis. Uh, in the next class, I show you a more sophisticated text mining. So you have less su subjectivity and uh, use machine learning algorithm. For today workflow, we, did, we haven't used any machine learning algorithm. We just simply attach positive and negative documents, count number of positive and negative ones, and maybe based, based on the subtraction, we end up saying a review is positive or negative. So it's very basic. This is a, actually, it was the first sentiment analysis method that people start to use. You might see in the next class, uh, there's so much more complicated ones that you basically can make uh, better decisions. But anyway, this is for today. And also I have another missing value note. I'm just saying that if it's still for some document, if there is no positive and negative, just assign number of zero. Let me just right click on pivot. Look at this observation. In this observation, there is no negative word, so there's a still there's a question mark. I'll just say that uh, just, anytime you see question mark, just put zero. It means no positive or negative words. Okay, in the upper uh, branch, I calculated a numerator. In the lower one, which was a group by node. I calculated this denominator. In the next one, I'm trying to make a formula to find if a document has a positive or negative sentiment. So for the next meta note, I, I calculate the mean of positivity and positives minus negatives. Maybe it's not the best one. You can just uh, try different formula to have a better, uh, to, to have a better accuracy. Okay, so with the first joiner one, I'm just attaching the, the uh, two branches. So how many positive, how many negative, and total number of terms in each document. And as you might see in your SQL courses, you need to identify uh, joining columns or the IDs that you want to use for join. So the names are not that much cute, like negative plus some parentheses TF ABS. With the column rename, I just want to have a cuter name. So instead of parentheses, whatever, I just said positive words, negative words, and all words. If you look at the results, looks much better. So much better now. Okay, so look at the first uh, formula node. I'm just say calculate positive minus negative divided by all words, or this formula. Do you remember that? So. And also, I'm just saying that after doing this formula, attach a new column of sentiment and score, which is the result of this uh, calculations. I right click, go to the output data. So look at the result of formula in the last column. I sort ascendingly. There is some negatives, but it's, for me, since after just top ones, vast majorities are either are more than zero. I don't like the result. You can add a scorer node to calculate the accuracy, but now I just want to have another formula to see what would be my prediction. So what I'm doing in the upper node, I just calculate the uh, mean and standard deviation. So for calculating mean and standard deviation, it might look weird, but I use a group by node. 
So but look at the aggregation function of the same calculated mean and standard deviation. I need to attach those mean and standard deviation to the workflow or to, I mean, to my formulas. So with table row to variable, I'm basically converting this uh, standard deviation and mean as a table to a variable that I can use it later. I stop by here. So if you want to add some comments, then I go to the next one. But basically in the upper branch, uh, I calculate the mean as some deviation. Then I use that brown table row to variable. It just make those uh, mean as some uh, division usable. And it's just how they uh, basic develop nine. So if you want, if you calculate the mean as some division somewhere, if you want to use it within another math formula, you need to use this node to come to make it usable for your formulas. Okay, so look at the rule engine. When I open it, um, I use a uh, Script commands in nine, it might be a little different from what you have seen, but uh, the concept is not difficult. I'm just saying that sentiment score, if it's more than uh, mean, uh, mean of sentiment score, so I, you, I calculated the standard division mean before, this is the that mean. If it's uh, more than that, consider as a positive sentiment, otherwise negative. So the DM there. So on, look at the left side, on the left side, lower left, I have mean sun deviation. It's the, R, the variables that I already calculated before. I click on mean here, but it just paste it as uh, D mean parentheses. So I have the color sign. So naming is a little weird, but I think, concept is very easy for you. So this time, instead of considering difference of more than zero, I want to say, let's say if difference is more than and I know it's very different from Python if command. So still uh, for the people who used to like Python R programming, this if condition might look super weird, but it's just how they develop. So. Um, so, just, I mean, you don't have to focus on this kind of formulation, but on the lower one, the variable that is created in the upper one is the uh, column that I can use from my table. So, I use a score, let's say, 
take one mask from here. I use a sentiment score from the table. And here, mean and subdivision, these are that I created before. So again, don't blame me, it's just how they develop now. Uh, so if for your project, if you want need to have some rule engine like here, I think uh, just come here and click on this question mark and there's some explanation how to formulate it. And also they provide us some sample codes, but yeah, still if you need uh, if you need some help, just let me know. But I think it may not be necessary to know the scripting in nine for everyone. More interestingly, if you are, which if hopefully if I have time to show you, you can also do Python and R coding within nine. So there's some nodes that you just drag and drop, and within that node, you do Python coding on uh, R coding. If you think this, if conditions look weird for you and you don't want to spend that much of time to learn this scripting, you can just use uh, whatever you learn in Python R, use the relevant node here, and just do your own code. That is that might be much more comfortable for you. Okay, so let's look at the result. So I made a new, okay, so let me just aim click. And also look at bottom I just said, uh, put the result of this if condition in sentiment prediction column. So when I look, uh, get the result, I had that sentiment prediction column. So this column comes from that rule engine. And this is what I created. So now it seems to have more balanced positive and negative reviews than previous one, which I just simply look at the subtraction. Uh, it seems almost, I mean, most of my reviews were, were positive. So for finding the accuracy of this method, I need to look at the actual human-made uh, sentiment analysis and then do the comparison. But you guys know that uh, those like the information that was related to human rated reviews is inside my document column. That document column has everything so, and it's a nine friendly. So having said that with the next note, category to class, uh, I'm just saying that look at my document column and take out the column that is related to its class. So is it the cl or classification? Is it positive classification or negative classification? Right click, result. So I have sentiment prediction and document class, which was man-made classification. I have the result. Now I can just simply find my accuracy of prediction versus the actual sentiments. I think it was here, so where did I, not here. So if you click on reading the data again and click to string to document node, you see that in the second part, I said category or in the sentiment column. So with this node, I put the sentiment inside my document column and all the way down here, I'm just taking out that column that I just embed into my document call. Okay. Any questions so far? I know it might be some ambiguity or weirdness, but at the end, just very simple. The big picture is we make the text ready, but maybe uh, get rid of some words that doesn't have sentiments like exclamation mark, uh, stop words, 
Then we add dictionaries. We count how many positive, how many negatives. Uh, first, we wanted to just look at positive minus negative. We saw that almost all of them are positive. Then said, so let's have another formula. Positive minus negative is if it's more than uh, mean of the sentimental score, positive, otherwise negative. We got the prediction. And now we just need to have a, a scorer node to uh, do the comparison of our prediction versus the actual sentiment. I still have an extra node, color manager. You can even hit it, so it's not necessary actually. Uh, just for show, I'm just saying that look at sentiment prediction. If it's negative, make it red. If it's positive, green. You can just change the color. For example, maybe here you can change it to blue. For negative, maybe from here, maybe yellow. So anyway, I just for next to each row, I have its color. Just means if my prediction what saying is positive or negative. Again, this is for show. Sure. You don't have to do that. And. The final note is a scorer. So with the scorer, I just want to comp do comparison of my, I mean, man-made formula for positivity and negativity, with the, which I did prediction with the actual sentiment. Click on a scorer. So the first column is the actual class, which was made by human. The second one is outcome of my prediction. Right click. Accuracy statistics, 74. So I had some positive sentiment, negative sentiment for each movie reviews, and my method has 74% accuracy. Do you think, is it too bad or too, too good or okay? So why you say it's okay? Okay, any other ideas? Yeah, as you see, there's some subjectivity for maybe, uh, it could be on different domains. Maybe you look at the uh, literature of papers people did for central analysis. If you see for movie reviews, maybe near 70 and you just 74, it seems okay. If there are 60, maybe you said 74 means very good. But your friend has also a good idea. So if you if you just toss a coin, so head and tail, you expect 50% accuracy, right? So at least your prediction should be much better than tossing a coin. So if my prediction was like 54 or maybe 51, you might say, what's the point of doing so many so so big uh, workflow and calculating something that are almost as good as just tossing a random coin. So near 50% is bad. Even worse than 50% is much uh, worse than that. Because if you toss a coin, you expect a better accuracy than doing a workflow. So yeah, so if I had four classes, let's say very negative, negative, positive, very positive. What was the base uh, probability? So here the base probability was 50%. What if you have four classes? Yeah, 25. So because if you randomly just say is it positive, very positive, negative, or very negative, you expect by chance 25%, you, you could be correct, 100 divided by four. So if you in that case, if your accuracy is 74, maybe I, I think you, you did it. Good, very good job. But 74 seems like three times more than random chance. Again, it might, be a little sub, it might have some subjectivity into it, but I think you got the uh, concept of uh, basic random probability. You should at least much better than that. Okay, thank you very much.
That's for today. So for the next class, we use machine learning. So the more complicated method of sentiment analysis. This was the, more, the, the traditional way of sentiment analysis, which has a lot of subjectivity. Okay, so let's go to the class attendance one. Okay.